social media activity and those people making a lot of money out of those fights. How do you feel about that? Well, I can't change what my first opinion was and my first reaction, um, which I mentioned on my YouTube channel, Frotch on Fighting. Have a look at that. But um, it's basically not good for the sport. I think it's a load of rubbish. And um, I think that as a heavyweight world champion, you have an obligation and a duty to... You've got, you've got a duty to the service of the sport of boxing. He, he's the heavyweight champ. He's the best heavyweight in the world. Um, Frank Warren went absolutely crazy. Adam Kasparov was suggesting the same thing. I saw it. Night. Yeah, I sat and watched it, and I just think that Frank Warren is just like, he's like a, <laughs> what is he like? Is he a miserable old man? Has he got a bee in his bonnet? I don't know what it is. He's very defensive over over everything he talks about now, and he's got a lot to say. And he's been quite verbally, he's been quite lucidly outspoken at times. He looked like he was just trying to keep his fighter active and make as much money as possible for him. Well, that is what he's doing. He's, he's keeping him active and making as much money. Brilliant. But he should be concentrating on the real boxing fights. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Muhammad Ali had a, had a resting, fought a rest of, at, the, at the end of his career, but he'd already fought Fraser and, and everybody else who was, who was lined up for him and all the, all the big hitters in the division. He'd done it. He'd had his career. Mm. And then he, he had a bit of a, I don't know, a testimonial fight or a bit of a joke shop fight. Whatever you want to call it, it's not a boxing match. It's an exhibitional entertaining type of fight. It's almost like, what was it, Rocky? I watched Rocky with my kids the other day. So Rocky three, he fought Thunderlips, didn't he? Rocky Balboa, yeah. Yeah. he fought the wrestler, um, Hulk Hogan. That's what this is. It's a joke. And he's not in the joke business. He's, he's the WBC heavyweight champion, and he needs to be fighting and defending that title, as far as I'm concerned. I understand he's making money. If I'm a world champion at this stage of his career, he's 35, he's getting, getting on. Hmm. And he's, it's all about the money for him. Um, so, yes, I can understand why he's doing it, and I get it. And I'm not going to say I wouldn't do it, because I would. I, if I'm being offered whatever it is, is it 50 million? It's silly money. He's a prize fighter. He's boxing to get paid. He's not boxing to get punched in the nose and not get paid. He's not risking his life for a small amount of money when he can not risk his life for a massive amount of money. I get that. But as a WBC World Heavyweight Champion, he's got an obligation to... Um, do better than fighting them Garner, I think. Has he cheapened himself by taking this fight as well? Um, I don't know if he cheapened himself. Maybe people look at that and think it's a bit of a joke, but he, he's crossed over to a whole new audience, hasn't he? If he doesn't want to take a proper fight at this stage because he wants to make sure that he's in reasonable shape for when he goes to Saudi Arabia and makes a hell of a lot of money, doesn't he? Yeah. Isn't yeah, that well, what it's all about, really? Yeah, I suppose, listen, his prize fighting is all about the money. But, but this fight against Ngarno, who's making his professional debut, mm. Let's be honest, he, he shouldn't have a chance, not even a puncher's chance. We saw what happened with Mayweather and Conor McGregor. Yeah. It was a mismatch. Uh, Mayweather was, was holding him up, taking his time, making a show of it. Cause, cause Mayweather I, I, I spent the whole week doing all the press conferences, yeah. and, and, and including hosting the one at Wembley, then watched the fight. It was, it was, was you one of all that got fooled and thought, actually, McGregor might have a chance? Because I'll be honest, yeah. I, I was. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to point my finger. I actually thought McGregor might actually have because he can fight he's, yeah he's, you know he's a great cage fighter proper tough nut like, and, so, and mayweather was towards the end of his career end of his career time, and you think there's pressure maybe, on it but he may box good it just shows you just shows you you cannot box it was, it was a complete mismatch it was, which is what this will be with Tyson and, 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 and he was just waiting and get, he, he allowed him to stay in the fight for a lot longer than he needed to really didn't he and that will happen again i think it was around seven or eight it was yeah for some reason <laughs> <laughs> I don't think why. <laughs> You've been in the news recently, haven't you? Because Joe Karzaghi's former promoter, we mentioned him just a moment ago, Frank Warren, accused you of ducking the fight against the Welshman. Can you set the record straight? That's just slander on my name. I'm a guy who, who's got a reputation for fighting anyone, anybody in the division. I fought the best of the best. I fought for Joe Karzaghi's title when he waited until the final hour on the last day to vacate. Um, so for Frank Warren to, to sit in this studio with a straight face or wherever he was and say that I went down to London and all I was interested in was when Joe Calzaghi, when Joe Calzaghi stepped up to light everywhere is pure nonsense, absolute rubbish. And I'm surprised that somebody of his stature, of his age, who's been promoted in the boxing game for so many years, will come out with just pure lies. Because I did go down to London, I did speak to Frank Warren, and the first thing he said to me when I said, when can this fight happen with Ming Calzaghi? The first thing he said was, he's stepping up to light heavyweight, so forget about it. To which I was completely deflated because I drove all the way down from London in my diesel escort um, I had to fill up myself because at the time I was skinned and um, drove back disappointed because he was stepping up to light heavyweight and he did. He vacated the title and I fought an unbeaten 
put me in line and John Pascal for the vacant WBC title, won it, and had a fantastic Hall of Fame career. The rest is history. So, yeah, disappointed with Frank Warren's um, nonsense um, because that just didn't happen. I did go down to London to speak to him. I'm, I'm going full circle now. But he volunteered the information about Calzaghi movement for light heavyweight, and I was gutted. And that was it. Why else did I go to London? Why else did I smoke down the motorway and then come away empty-handed if it wasn't to go down there and try and make the fight with, with Frank Warren? There's a bit of needle between you and uh, Joe Calzaghi. No, you know what? There's no needle between me and Joe Calzaghi. Obviously, we'll have a, we'll have a talk sport exclusive here because I've got so much respect for Joe Calzaghi and his career, and I picked the best fighter of... I mean, between him and Lennox Lewis, who's the best British fighter in the last 20-odd years, and I had to pick Calzaghi just because he's had such a fantastic career. A real tough guy, fast hands, can take a punch. There's a few things I could say. He can always pull somebody's career down. He never rematched Robin Reed. That was a close fight. He, he rematched Mario Villa a couple of times. He fought Hopkins and, and Roy Jones when they were past the best late. But Hopkins did go on to win a couple of good fights after that fight. But Calzaghi had a great career. Super fit, really tough, determined, real special fighter, unbeaten in 46 fights. I've got no beef with him. I was mandatory for his WBC belt, the super middleweight WBC green and gold belt. I was mandatory for that title, which is why I went down to speak to Brick Top at the time. And um, he vacated the title. I fought for the vacant title. That's that's as far as I, it goes. If I'd have fought Joe Calzaghe, he would have gone one or two ways. He'd have either beat me on points or he'd have lost by stoppage or knockout. I would have backed myself to beat him. He would have backed himself to beat me on points. He ain't going to knock me out, no chance. So it would have been a great fight, one of the great fights that never happened. But I've got no beef with Calzaghe, I've got nothing but respect for him. If you've got no beef with him, is, is there one opponent that you dislike uh, about everybody else? Well, the opponent I dislike? Um, not really. I mean, George Groves was my big dislike um, opponent. Well, really, I mean, dislike is a kind of word than hate. I actually hated him, Grovesy boy, but I had two fights with him. Beat him twice. First one, I then got beat. Well, I did get beat, but let's be honest, I got beat up in the first fight, but um, stayed on my feet. And got forced to stoppage, albeit controversial. I still got the win on the record. But then I got a rematch and, and that, laid that to rest. You know, George went on and had a fantastic career, become world champion. So yeah, there's no, there's nobody really. If I'm honest, I was never a massive fan of James DeGale because he talked a bit of nonsense. But he was a super middleweight. I mean, he was picking up my scraps. He was the Durrell, um, Lucian Duse. I beat them up before he beat them. They're his best wins, by the way. But anyway. My career speaks for itself. I've got no animosity or hatred towards any fighter. Fighters get in the ring and they risk their life, and I've got some yeah. I know what they're putting and, themselves and that, That's the thing, isn't it? I mean, it's very difficult to sort of lay shade on someone when you know how hard it is and what they have to sacrifice to go for just to get into the ring on a regular basis. Absolutely. Before we let you go, and we know you've got to go and record your, 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 your talk boxing show, let's get your thoughts on the huge pound for pound clash. Less than two weeks till Terence Crawford uh, takes on Errol Spence in the undisputed World Weight title clash. Is this the best fight in boxing on the horizon right now? Yeah, I think it has to be. It's a fight that probably could have happened a couple of years ago and, and maybe should have happened, but between, I mean, Terence Crawford's slightly older, um, more experienced and more fights, um, but this is still a real proper hard fight for both men. And it's, it's both fighters. You could say that one of them's past the best is getting a bit older, but you could say that makes him a better fighter. Look at Hopkins, he's right into his early 40s. Yeah. He improved, he changed his style, and um, he became a more rounded, superior athlete into his 40s. He was harder to beat. Um, so, this fight is a proper boxing match between two guys at the top of the game, and difficult to pick a winner, but I'd say, and I'd personally make Terence Crawford a slight favourite. Although I've been up close with both of these guys and, and commentated at ringside when they both fought, Kel Brook actually, and Sean, was it Paul to the fort as well? We've got a couple of um, common opponents and I mean, they're both just fantastic fighters. It's going to be great to see them both get in the ring from round one because they're, they're both, it's going to be a proper fight. Their style is going to make for a real entertaining matchup as well. I might have, actually go out there and watch this one. Okay, well, listen, we've got, uh, it's been a great half an hour. Thank you very much for coming in. And there's so much more to come from Carl. He's got a lot more to say. So why not um, tune into the talk, a boxing